This video is an attempt to show how easy it is to give a realistic representation of varnish teak using oil paints. So this is the candidate I'm going to be painting today. It's a hybrid of MJT and Comet parts, uh, so it's brass based. It's been primed and it's been primed with Halford's filler primer which gives it this yellow hue. Um, the only thing to be aware of as it is designed to fill gaps try to use it sparingly or you'll end up obliterating a lot of the details on the, on the coach. So what are we going to use for this exercise? Uh, we're going to start with some base coats using a mixture of Vallejo orange barrel acrylic, Vallejo bright orange acrylic and we're going to use some flat earth acrylic as well. So those are our three basic base colours. Um, a very useful technique is to mix them on a tile, some white ceramic tile, for the very simple reason it's very very easy to clean. And I've got some kitchen paper to hand should I need it. And I'll also need a couple of brushes or a brush. In my case, I tend to like using these Golden Taclon flat brushes. They're, they're reasonably soft, and reasonably cheap. Another one there. And without further ado, let's start actually applying the base colours for the teak. I find trying to get a good angle for the camera while doing this so it doesn't, doesn't get in the way isn't very easy. So please bear with me, I hope you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to start off um, with the Vallejo paint, just give it a quick shake, make sure it's well mixed. And I'm going to squeeze some onto the tile. And I'm going to do the same with the orange brown. These have been laying dormant for a long time so they probably do need a good shake. There we are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the coach and I'm going to blend those two shades together to get a mix between the two and then I'm going to very very carefully very lightly brush it out over the model. It needs to be a very very thin coat obviously the thicker the coats that you do the more detail you will obscure. Let's try and get that bit further down. That better. So make sure it's brushed out thoroughly. We're after a very, very thin coat just to give it the colour it needs to be without obliterating the detail, like so. I should have added, you may notice on the primer that it's not necessarily totally uh, covered in places. That's okay, it doesn't matter if it's patchy. Patchy helps, because for a teak coach, they vary greatly from panel to panel. And there's really not a lot of value in me videoing the whole process. So I think I'm going to turn the video off and carry on without being watched. So here you can see the uh, first base colour has been put on. Um, hasn't fully dried yet but it won't take long. Vallejo paints being acrylic dry very quickly. Um, just noticed a few little bits of build up which I'm just going to try and fix there. But generally speaking you'll notice that the uh, Vallejo is a very very fine pigment and as such it goes on without obscuring detail as long as you don't put it on too thick. So I'm going to leave that now to dry and then I'm going to pick out some panels in a slightly different colour. When I was doing the base coat um, I have a couple of 3D printed sides here that I've also treated so I can show some variations on colour a little bit later on. Um, 
If you look at a grizzly coach, it's not an even colour all over. You'll find certain panels might be different shades. So now's the opportunity to use the Vallejo Orange Brown. Just pick out some of the panels just to change their colour very slightly. It doesn't have to be very detailed. But having said that, it's very difficult to actually see it in this light. Let's do this one over here. It's a little bit different from the other one. Like so. We'll let that dry. Now it's important at this stage to, uh, no it's not, I'll edit that out. So there we've got that bit there. Now another thing we can do if we want to, and again this is optional, is just dry that, clean the paintbrush off. Just dry that. I'm going to get some of the Vallejo Flat Earth. Just squeeze some onto there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some on my brush. I'm going to use it as a dry brushing technique just to add a little bit of variation on some of the panels. Just about see it there. It's a little bit more obvious with natural light and uh, natural eyesight rather than on the video. Don't overdo it, if in doubt, just damp the brush, take it off. So I'm now going to do it on the main coach, just to put a little bit of variation on the panelling. Very light touch, just to give it. Let's try and get it in frame. Just a few panels, doesn't need to be many. Just to give a little bit of variety to the eye, and the eye will detect it. You have, if you're trying to model an old coach which has gone a very very dark colour then you can do this far more than I'm doing here for a relatively recently our shot coach. There we are. Let's just use the orange paint there as well. That panel. Just to give a little bit of variety. It's not a lot. In fact, you might even say to yourself, is it honestly worth doing? Right, so that's that bit. Let's do the other side. And get it in frame, which I've not been very good at doing. So it's a bit of a hodgepodge at the moment, but that's fine. It'll all get covered up by the graining coat. Which we're going to apply tomorrow, not today really got to have time to go off and dry before we start doing the oil wash on top. Now notice that when I'm doing this streaking I'm doing it in the direction of the graining. So for upper panels I'm doing it vertically, for the lower panels I'm doing it horizontally. You can see it's a bit patchy there, 
which is lovely. I think I might just do one of the ends. The ends is just out of camera range. Let's just move that. Shrink that a little bit. Over there. Possibly for the other end as well. I think that will do. So I'm going to put that to one side to dry off. Let's just do this one as well while we've got it here. As you can see it's very subtle, just about viewable. Certainly not neat, it doesn't have to be neat. So the next step is going to hide a multitude of sins. We're just getting a little bit of variation on some of the panels before we take it a stage further. I do apologise for knocking the camera there. Alright, let's just do one more down the bottom here. So it's used very, very dry. Like so. And there we have it. So I'm going to put that to one side to dry now before giving it a sealing coat of clear. So the last stage for today is to give the um, base colours a coat of clear which will act as a protection and make it easier to apply the oil um, when the clear is fully dried. So for the clear then I'm just dipping the brush in the bottle Just giving it a coat over the base colours just to seal the thing in. Try not to leave too many bubbles just in case they dry in place. So the idea is to cover all of the base coat with the clear. So I'll continue to do that. And then it, we put aside to dry overnight. And then tomorrow I can start Performing magic and putting the teak coats on, and you'll see the coach completely transformed. So, until then, good night.